I want to start out with the sample space. Our sample space is going to consist of the possible outcomes. So I know that when I'm flipping a coin, I could either land on heads or on tails. So when I put my sample space together, I'm going to create a tree diagram based on the results for each coin, all the possibilities. So when I flip that first coin, it could land on either heads or tails. When I flip that second coin, it could also land on either heads or tails. So we're going to branch off. Heads or tails could follow a heads on the first. Heads or tails could follow tails on the first. Okay, so there's that one. And then I've got one more coin to record. Now that third coin could also land on either heads or tails. So I'm gonna follow the outcomes I've got so far and then follow each of those with either a head or a tail. Okay, head or tail, head or tail, head or tail. Now if I were to list out the sample space, I could go ahead and list out each of the branches. So I could follow this first branch down, head, head, and then head. So that would be H, 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 and so on, right? And then the second one would be head, head, tail, head, head, tail. The nice thing about the tree diagram is you don't have to write them all out. You can grab each of the outcomes by following the branches down. We do know that we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ends to those branches. I can calculate that by knowing that there are two possible outcomes for each coin. Heads or tails on the first times heads or tails on the second times heads or tails on the third. Two times two times two gives me eight possible outcomes. Now I need all of this information so I can do some probabilities. Let's get into it. So for our first example, let's do the probability that we get, um, let's say, all three heads. I already wrote that one down in my sample space, so it's a nice one to work with. So I want the favorable outcomes. I'm going to count those up and I'm going to divide those by the total outcome. So favorable outcomes divided by total. My favorable outcomes are just this branching here, heads, heads, and heads. That's one outcome out of my eight total. So I end up with one over eight. You could also put this in your calculator to get a decimal form if you wanted. I'm just gonna leave them as fractions. Next, let's do the probability of getting one head. And when I say one head, let's do exactly one head. So exactly one head. So I'm going to run through and I'm going to find the branches that give me that. Let's use an orange branching. Okay, so if I start with head on the first coin, I would want two tails after that. So this is a favorable outcome. If I start with tails, I can go ahead and take a head on the second, a tail on the third. So there's another favorable, or I could do tails and then tails and then heads. There's my third. You could also think this one through as having, I can only have heads in the first one, other two tails, heads second only, heads third coin only. So that's gonna give me three out of eight. What if I changed that one just a little bit and instead I asked for the probability of at least one head? So at least one head. Okay, so this would be the probability of having at least one head or I could have two heads or I could have three heads, three heads. So I've got three possible cases there with a lot of different branchings to have to add up. 
Instead, let's think about the only case that we don't want. If I want at least one head, that means that I'm never going to have the case in my favorable outcomes here. I am not counting tail, tail, tail. This is the one that I don't want. So I'm going to take all of those outcomes. There are eight of them, and I'm going to subtract that one outcome I don't want, which is tails, tails, and tails. So to come up with this one, I'm actually going to use what we call a complement, sort of working backwards, taking out what you don't want. So for my favorable outcomes, I'm going to take all eight of those that I've got represented up here, and I'm going to take out the one that I don't want. And that one that I don't want was all tails. Such a nice way to do this one. The number of favorable outcomes is still eight. So I end up with seven divided by eight for this one. I hope this helped with your probability with three tails. Do take a look at this next probability video. I think it's going to help you out as well. Thank you so much for watching.